Perfect. So hello everyone and welcome back to Shark Talk with Sharks for Kids. I hope you managed to catch last week's session with Rene Grinnell Capozzola uh, on shark photography and conservation in French Polynesia. Uh, if you missed it, you can catch up on our YouTube channel Shark Kids, uh, as well as all of our previous webinars and lots more content. You can also visit our uh, website sharksforkids.com um, where we've got loads of resources, crafts and fact sheets and posters um, that you can use at home or in your classroom. So um, today I'm really, really excited to be hosting the really amazing Bianca Rangel. Um, I'm anglicizing your name, so I'm sorry about that. Bianca and I met in 2018 in Brazil at a conference, and I've really, really enjoyed following all of her updates ever since on all of the amazing work and science she's been doing. She's a biologist and PhD student in physiology at the Institute of Biosciences at the University of São Paulo in Brazil. She uses conservation physiology tools to understand how sharks and rays use their energy for reproduction, how mothers invest in their babies, and how urbanization and tourism are affecting the quality of the food they eat, as well as when, where, and what they eat. Um, so there's a couple of big words in there. Physiology is essentially the way in which an animal's body works. Um, so how a shark's body works and urbanization is how humans are building cities and buildings and roads and so on um, and in this case how they're doing it on the edge of the ocean on the coast. So Bianca thank you so much for being here it's really such a pleasure to be hosting you and to have you share your work with us I'm really excited excited to to hear all that you've got to tell us so if Again, if anyone has any questions, just put them in the Q&A box underneath and uh, I will now let you go ahead and um, take it away. Thank you, Jenny. <clears throat> I'm sorry <laughs> uh, for the introduction. <clears throat> oh my God. Uh, thanks, Sharks for Kids, uh, for inviting me. I'm so, so excited to be here today uh, talking a, a little bit of, about urban sharks and physiology too. So talking a little bit more about me, uh, I've been studying uh, sharks and rays for almost 10 years and studying uh, live animals since my master's degree uh, when I had the great opportunity to, to research baby cow nose rays, this amazing species, uh, species. And I was interested in understanding how babies were living in a nursery area here in Brazil especially looking at uh, their neonatal nutritional strategy. So we investigated uh, the maternal influence uh, during the early life stages of the babies and how the nutritional status changes as the babies grow in their, in the, in, in their uh, first year of life. So super interesting results we found uh, and, and so amazing uh, working with this, this kind of, this, this species, this beautiful species. And now in my PhD, I am studying the ecophysiology of sharks uh, as, um, as Jenny said. So I, uh, uh, for instance, trying to understand how sharks are using their energy for reproduction. Uh, including males and females, what the relationship uh, between physio phys uh, physiological state and residency patterns like ecotourism sites, and also how urbanization can affect their health and their health and diet. And for this one, I'm gonna share some results with you today. I'm doing my PhD uh, under supervision of the professor Renata Guimarães Moreira at University of Sao Paulo. Uh, here in Brazil, and New Hammerschlag at University of Miami. Also, my research is in uh, partnership with Shark Research and Conservation Program at University of Miami, coordinated by NEO. So, urbanization in sharks, how so? Uh, have you ever seen a sharks in a big city? Do they persist uh, in places with lots of people and buildings? This is kind of strange. But let's see if it's, it's possible. Uh, 
This is relatively common to see some wild animals in the city, like some bird species, squirrels, fishes. Other medium and large mammals are not so popular, but occasionally they appear in the news, don't they? But what about sharks? It's common to see sharks in the city. Actually, not much, but they are there. So sharks and also rays are living closer to the cities than many people realize. But why are sharks living or using occasionally waters near big cities? I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna show you to more details. So one reason is because coastal areas also near big cities are very productive. So sharks can find a great abundance of food. Also, they can eat a great diversity of prey, for example, and meet their nutritional requirements to grow or to reproduce. So many shark species use near, near shore and shallow waters as nursery ground uh, during their early life stages when juveniles can find abundant food and higher temperatures, for example, allowing them to grow at faster rates and receive an increased refuge from predators. However, it's also where they are typically more susceptible to the anthropogenic impacts, including coastal urbanization. So during their, their life cycle, some sharks, some sharks tend to use uh, shallow coastal waters during their early life stages, uh, as I said. And then uh, when they grow, uh, they are capable to explore other environments and deeper waters. And then when they reach sexual maturity, they reproduce, and then females of some species return to, uh, to the nursing areas, sometimes even where they were born, to give a birth to their babies, to their baby sharks. And then the cycle happens again from the initial uh, growth to reproduction and again and again. So these shallow coastal waters are really important uh, for their initial survival, also to ensure um, the population structures of certain species. But some species use re regions uh, even closer to humans. This is the case of bull sharks which uh, we use it, uh, rivers as nursery ground, where juveniles spend their first years of life. So females enter to their river to give birth uh, to their babies. Uh, and this is, is so incredible. And in this case, uh, sharks are facing even more impacts. For example, with the constructions of ports and other modifications in the rivers, where they typically use as nursery ground. But what would be the problem of leaving the city in addition to those uh, I told you? So are there any negative things and positive things? Let's see some examples. So talking about the negative consequence of urbanization, uh, what um, is there in the city that can be harmful? to sharks. So the more people using uh, or living in this area, uh, the more population, the more pollution, sorry, the more pollution, including noise pollution, light pollution, chemical pollution. So for example, light pollution through artificial light at night uh, can change animals' behaviors, including the behavior of sharks and their prey. So this can have disturbing effects on their trophic relationship and nutrition, and consequently on their health as well. Also chemical pollution by metals and organic uh, contaminants can directly affect health and reproduction of sharks. Also increase the sewage in the water can dramatically alter uh, the entirety of the base of the food web uh, through uh, the eutrophication process, for example, change the diet of the sharks and other animals. Eutrophication can also reduce dissolved oxygen in water. Let's watch a short, a short video about this process. What is eutrophication? It's a problem that should matter to you whether you live near the ocean or not. 
That's because it begins wherever people live and ends with damage to resources we all use and enjoy. It all starts when nutrients get into lakes and oceans. Remember, it's waste to humans can be food to plants and other creatures. Nutrients feed algae like they do other plants. Algae grows and blocks sunlight. Plants die without sunlight. Eventually, the algae dies too. Bacteria digest the dead plants using up remaining oxygen and giving off carbon dioxide. If they can't swim away, fish and other wildlife become unhealthy or die without oxygen. But it doesn't have to be this way. Protecting marine resources starts with sound agricultural and waste management practices. So all of these associated problems together with habitat loss, overfishing, and uh, in these urban uh, coastal areas can even reduce the number of the apex predators causing several other problems to the, the food chain. Sounds really troubling, doesn't it? But are there only negative effects uh, of urbanization? Actually not. Uh, there are several other species that can benefit from these changes in, in their environment. Uh, for example, uh, they increase the nutrients coming from the sewage, uh, sewage, sorry, uh, can serve as a, a food for several small animals, which ended up multiplying very quickly and thus ben uh, benefiting uh, the food of animals throughout, uh, throughout uh, the food chain, including some mesopredators like some shark species, shark species. So even for those animals that uh, persist in the city and benefit in some way from those changes, they may have some health problems uh, due to the increased pollution, for example. Despite few studies have uh, investigated the influence of urbanization on sharks, we already have a very interesting and worrying results published. Let's see uh, some examples. So one of the first study was this one uh, with uh, the bonnet head sharks in Florida coast. Uh, the research compared a bonnet head sharks population between areas with high and low urbanization and they found that an association among urbanization, high concentrations of uh, organic pollutants, and the high infertility rates, infertility rates uh, in bonnet head sharks. So indicating a great influence of urbanization on, reprodu on, rep on reproductive health of sharks. Uh, it's, this is a, a kind of uh, worrying result, isn't it? But as I showed you, um, the finds are not always negative. So for example, studying nurse sharks in Miami, researchers from uh, the Shark Research and Conservation Program at the University of Miami found that nurse sharks had higher concentrations of triglycerides, indicating they were in better nutritional condition compared to those captured far from uh, the great metropolis. So in other words, Urban nurse sharks are probably eating more food, getting fatter. This is super interesting. So to understand more about these nurse sharks from Miami, uh, we did other analysis. Uh, this is a part of my PhD project. But now to investigate if, despite being feeding well and apparently uh, in greater quantities, is it possible that nurse sharks are experiencing a poor quality diets in urbanized areas? Um, especially because food research uh, in urban areas are often calorie rich, but nutrient poor. So let's see what, uh, what we did. So to answer that question, we collected blood, uh, blood samples from juvenile nurse sharks and run fatty acid analysis. Actually, you can analyze it other uh, nutritional markers like proteins, lipid classes, 
But as I'm gonna tell you, a fatty acid analysis is especially relevant to in this kind of research. But why? So many of you uh, here today may have seen this expression somewhere. You are what you eat. Yeah, is it, and, and as I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, sharks too. So this means that if you uh, eat healthy foods, you'll be healthier. healthier. Uh, you have um, a more efficient immune, immune response. Your nervous and visual organs will develop better. On the other, on the other hand, uh, if, you fa if you eat fast food, like, like I saw other examples, uh, with a few nutrients, you have various health problems. You'll be overweight and etc. But what exactly does this mean? So everything we eat uh, is incorporated it into your cells uh, with little modifications. So if you eat uh, nutrient-rich uh, foods like vegetables and fruits, you will have healthier, happier cells like here. In an opposite way, if you eat nutrient poor food, you have less healthy, sadder cells like here. In fact, this is gonna have several implications uh, for your physiology, for your health. And this is really important in your life, in our life, and of course sharks too. So in this contest, we looked at some, uh, at some of these nutrients, uh, the fatty acids, but why can fatty acids be so useful to us? First, because physiologically important fatty acids such as omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acids are synthesized at the base of the food webs by primary producers and are then uh, selectively, selectively uh, retained uh, by consumers like nurses, sharks, and other fishes. Also, consumers are unable, unable to produce uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids, so sharks and also us humans and our vertebrates depend on essential fatty acids that are produced by plants and phytoplankton. Therefore, fatty acid analysis provides information uh, on the diet quality and allows us uh, to identify the main producers, producers present at the base of the food chain, like diatoms, dinoflagellates, and etc. So this is super useful when we are studying shark's diet, trophic ecology. A very practical an example is, uh, is this one with the stingrays exposed to the provisioning ecotourism uh, in the Cayman Island. island. So comparing fed stingrays exposed to the ecotourism and unfed stingrays from the control areas, research observed that the quality of the food provided uh, during the, the tourism activities was very different uh, from that in a natural, natural environment. Uh, for example, uh, they found uh, high percentages of uh, omega-3 fatty acids uh, that is only abundant in colder re regions. So in practice, what does this mean? Uh, this omega-3 fatty acid found in the, in the diet of the fat stingrays is a fatty acid that play an important role in the immune system. So a high consumption of these omega-3 omega fatty acids uh, fatty acid had certain consequences uh, for the, the stingrays health, like increased uh, parasite and diet-induced uh, anemia, for example. So this is a, not perfect uh, example of how diet quality can be important uh, for animals' health. But let's get back to urban sharks. So to investigate these aspects in urban sharks, we compared uh, plasma fatty acid profiles of juvenile nurse sharks in proximity to Miami, 
a large coastal city within uh, Biscayne Bay. And for this, we captured and sampled these sharks in two different uh, management areas within uh, the Biscayne Bay. So the first within the metropolitan region, North Biscayne Bay, called here as urban area or ur urban sharks, and within the Biscayne National Park, our non-urban area, non-urban non sharks. So what we expect to find, uh, we predict that urban sharks would exhibit a lower pro overall proportion of pollen saturated fatty acids, especially omega-3 fatty acids. And this because high levels of nutrients uh, are often associated with coastal runoff, as I showed you, and which can reduce uh, the proportions of pollen saturated in the base of the food web, consequently decreasing trophic transfer of those nutrients to high, cons to high consumers like uh, there is a sharks here. We also expect to find a higher proportions of saturated and bacterial fatty acids in urban sharks, as these biomarkers are, are highly correlated with urbanization, for example, due to uh, the domestic sewage. So some of the uh, characteristic results of a low, a low nutritional quality. And so what uh, did we find? We found that urban sharks had higher percentages of saturated fatty acids like those we found uh, in fast food, like french fries and hamburgers. But sharks aren't uh, eating french fries and hamburgers. It's just for you to understand. Also, we found a higher percentages of bacterial markers, uh, which are uh, may associated with the increasing uh, increased pollution in this urbanized area, for example, as a consequence of organic matter in this region. Also, in non-urban uh, sharks, we found a higher per higher percentages of omega-6 pollen saturated fatty acids, which uh, have an important role in the immune system and inflammatory responses. Like I showed you uh, for that uh, omega-3 fatty acids and fat stingrays. So in conclusion, our finds uh, demonstrate that juvenile nurse sharks differed uh, in their dietary patterns between low and highly altered areas, and that Urban sharks seem uh, to consume lower quality food research in, altered, in, in these altered habitats. So therefore, we hypothesize that these results are driving by bottom-up effects, a bottom-up effects. And this means that lower trophic levels like producers are affecting the quality diet of higher trophic levels. And thus altering uh, the trophic transfer of fatty acids through food web to nurse sharks. Uh, this means that uh, city living can have some long-term effects uh, or impacts in, uh, on, their, on their health. And uh, um, okay, and that's okay. Uh, I, oh, sorry. Oh, I lost it here. Oh, okay. So, uh, <laughs> so, okay, we found uh, these results in a relatively sedentary species, shark species. We stay in the same place for long periods, but would, have, uh, would um, highly mobile sharks also have this kind of nutritional profile? So, to, to answer that question, we looked at this uh, the same nutrients uh, in the juvenile uh, tiger sharks, which is a highly mobile species, even in the uh, juvenile stages. But in this case, we compare the sharks from South Florida with those from the Bahamas. And we expect the same uh, we found in nurse sharks. But actually, what we found was quite different. So we found 
Oh, it's a, okay. We found that uh, Florida tiger sharks had uh, higher percentages of omega-3 omega fatty acids, which are physiologically important fatty acids, as I told you. And in the Bahama shark, tiger sharks, we found higher percentages of bacterial fatty acids, the opposite that we found in nurse sharks. So one explanation, one possible explanation is that juvenile nurse sharks sampled uh, in the Bahamas maybe are consuming more uh, demersal prey, like sm smaller fishes, uh, since bacterial markers are usually found in higher concentrations in demersal prey. So maybe these smaller tiger sharks could be feeding more on more bent prey types uh, to avoid competition with large tiger, larger tiger, uh, like larger tiger sharks, uh, especially larger, larger females that feed more on more prey such as more large prey such as uh, turtles and marine mammals and large fishes, for example. So take it together. Take it together. Uh, these finds do not suggest that uh, the difference in nutritional quality uh, found between these two sampling locations can be related to foraging in areas exposed to different uh, levels of urbanization. But maybe because uh, of the highly migratory nature and generalist, the gen generalist uh, feeding strategy of these species. So it's kind of different when we compare nurse and tiger sharks uh, in that case. But why is it important to understand more about it? So first, because coastal areas are essential for reproduction and grow for several shark species, as I showed you. Also, the human population is rapidly growing and consequently urbanization is increasing around the world. And it can dramatically impact sharks and other animals. So we urgently need understanding uh, what uh, the impacts are and to suggest appropriate management actions for these environments. And we have several other shark species also raised living in or occasionally using large cities around the world. So we need to understand how sharks and rays are capable to be there, and what we can to do, what uh, we can do uh, to help them, to protect them. Also, it's important to show people that sharks and rays are there in the city, and we use that to bring people closer to sharks, make them understand that sharks are part of their life part of their life, and not just in remote, preserve, preserved places, for example. So thanks uh, to everyone who, uh, who watched it. And again, thanks, Sharks for Kids and Jenny for the, this opportunity, for the invitation. Uh, as I said, uh, I'm initial, I'm available for question, but please, if you're not, I'm not able to answer appropriately because my bad English, uh, please email me with uh, your question, and so we can answer it in details. Uh, thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Bianca. First of all, your presentation is beautiful. <laughs> I wish I had your presentation making skills because that was stunning and so interesting. Um, yeah, so thank you so much uh, for sharing that with us. And it's just one more way that humans are having an impact uh, on sharks and on our environment. So we often think about having an impact on sharks through fisheries and, and hunting them and killing them, but we're, we're affecting them in so many different ways and other ways than that. Um, so we have a few questions and, and we have some really excellent ones. Um, Hannah uh, first, um, so you talked about Florida and the Bahamas, but Hannah lives in Canada and where the water is much colder um, and she's only ever heard of great white sharks in, in Newfoundland, but 
Um, she was wondering if there are any other sharks that live near cities in, in Canada or other cold places. Uh, do you know? Let me just. I, I don't know exactly because I'm living in Brazil. <laughs> yes. Sharks from the US. But I guess so. And actually, we don't know um, much about uh, where sharks are living and also neither for a race. So I would say yes. I would say the sharks are using there occasionally, maybe. But for sure, uh, there are sh some sharks in race, even in uh, in uh, anthropogenic uh, impacted area. Uh, we have various sharks and ray species, like here in Brazil. So I guess, I guess, so, I guess there are some shark species. Yeah, Hannah, um, I live over in Ireland, which is uh, the other side of the Atlantic from you. And uh, over here, we get uh, poor beagle sharks, for example, um, which are very similar to salmon sharks. And now I know that salmon sharks live up in Canada. So maybe that's one of them. Um, oh. So James uh, from Plum Tree Park has some really great questions coming through. And uh, one of them was about the way that you extract blood from a shark. Uh, he wants to know what equipment you use and how you do it. I'm sorry if I, 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 I didn't understand the question. So take but, the blood, to take the blood okay. from the shark, how do you do it? Uh, we uh, take blood from the uh the caldo vinian i i'm sorry <laughs> yes. i don't remember the caldo vinian uh it's in sharks are relatively easy to uh to take blood from race it's a, a kind of impossible <laughs> sometimes <laughs> but it's from the the, the uh the caldo vinian vinian yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah so caudal uh for, for those watching us caudal is the tail um, so some people take it from just above the tail and some people take it from below and we use a needle and syringe just like we would in a human. Um, awesome. Yeah, thank you. Hira uh, from Plum Tree Park also asked, is there a different impact on sharks and their lifestyle if they live in places like a uh, in the in oceans compared to aquariums is there a do you know if there's like a difference in um all the things that you've looked at depending on on whether they live in an ocean or in the aquarium yes yes i don't know exactly who, uh, what uh things can can change it but uh, it's easy to think if you uh, think about what uh they are feeding so they are feeding things different in, in, the, in the ocean, in, in the in aquarium, for example. So the nutrients are different and their health are different and uh, the light is different. All things is different. The relationship with uh, other species are different. So everything changes. But we don't know uh, yet, uh, yet uh, how this, um, uh, the physiology and ecology of sharks changes. Uh, when we 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 have them in a in aquarium, for example. Awesome, um, and a little bit similar to that. Um, James also asks: Is the problems that you saw in your study in Florida are they just? Is it something that's only true in Florida and in the Bahamas, or is it true? Would it be true around the world? So, I'm sorry, I, I I've just put it in the chat for you. So the the issues that you show in your presentation, um, are they also issues that would be in sharks that live um in in the UK or in Japan, for example? I'm sorry, my inter my internet <laughs> to this. <laughs> That's okay. So um can you hear can you hear me now? Yes, yes, now it's okay. okay. Yes, so, now it's okay. 
the the nutritional uh, problems that you find in sharks in Miami um, do they also happen in other cities or is it just in Miami oh okay yeah. now I, I could <laughs> uh, we don't know yet because we uh, we don't don't have studies uh, in other cities comparing in sharks uh, health and also race um, and to see if um, the the different or similarities is is this uh, is the same way, but I I would say not because um, cities are quite different, so the impacts are different, and and, and species are different too. So each species respond in some way um, from uh, from those impacts. So. Uh, because that we need more and more studies and also not just studies in in a place or in another place in another city in another uh in another country but also across for example uh comparing the seasons the uh the season around the world around uh the year uh throughout the year for example so we have a lot of difference and also, uh, when we see um, uh, the life stage too, uh, these can uh, can change the results. For example, in this study, we use uh, juvenile nurse, uh, nurse and tiger sharks. Mm -hmm. But we, uh, if you, we look at the adult animals, adult sharks, it's totally different because the animals. Uh, are reproducing, are using energy differently. So it's a kind of complex. And so, but I would say some of these results can uh, uh, can be used to infer or to, to give some hypothesis for other places around the world, for example. Awesome. Yeah, that's right. Um, there's still so much we have to uh, study and find out, um, and especially as humans are more and more changing their environment and modifying uh, uh, the places they live, and all of these things are going to have an impact on sharks and other animals, um, and those things change whether it's the winter or the summer, and there's more rain or there's less rain, um, or it's colder or it's warmer, and so there's still so much we have to study. Um, and once again, it's something that maybe one of you guys watching us could be working on one day. Um, so I'm going to change a little bit now. I have some questions, some personal questions for you. I would like to know uh, what your the, your favorite shark is, or Ray. I don't know because I love all them, all species. But now, after this study, I would say it's tiger sharks uh, because um, they are amazing, uh, especially uh, their uh, reproductive uh, strategy. So females have a, a unique reproductive strategies among all elasma brands. So this is this is so amazing. They are highly migratory. Uh, they are beautiful. Also, so I would say tiger sharks now. <laughs> Yeah, that's funny. Most people I uh, ask that question tell me it's a really difficult question to answer and I can totally relate because uh, all sharks are pretty amazing. Um, so I have two more questions for you. The first one is, um, is there a moment uh, or a memory from field work, uh, some, a really cool story that you have from some of the field work that you've done? I don't remember now one specifically, <laughs> but in my master's, uh, my master's degree, I, I, as I, 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 I showed you, I study, I studied a small uh, stingray uh, ray species, colonel rays, baby colonel rays. So uh, we uh, we collected samples uh, from uh, several babies, uh, which was um, which were uh, caught uh, by captured by the artisan, artisanal fisheries here in Brazil. 
So one day, uh, they captured uh, 15, uh, 15, I don't know, 50. Uh, I'm terrible with numbers. Uh, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it in the chat. Uh, 15 uh, stingrays. Oh, I can't. Uh, so it was a lot of babies. So we could, uh, we could manage them. So just do nothing, just release. Oh, let's just release these babies because there are so many and there were many people uh, on the beach too. So it was totally crazy, but it was a, a beautiful memory uh, of this field. It was pretty amazing and the babies were, were awesome. Oh, bless. Love baby rays. They are adorable, like little raviolis. Yeah. Um, and my last question for you, and then I'll let you go, is do you have any advice uh, for anyone watching who might be interested in going into marine biology or shark science? Um, it's pretty difficult uh, to question. It's a great question. Uh, because working with the sharks and rays is it's too hard sometimes because we we don't see these animals they are in the ocean so it's pretty difficult but i would say to study a lot and uh, also talking with uh with with our researchers uh working with these uh, animals they are uh the best people to uh, to supervise it and to to guide you on on uh, on your dreams and um, and I guess so I guess it's that so we study a lot because uh, ninety two percent of our work is on the computer studying <laughs> and, and doing this kind of thing so the field is five percent. At least for me, five percent of my work is on the field. So, I I would say that. Uh, so, we study a lot and research a lot and watching this. Especially now in pandemic, uh, we have a lot of opportunities just to watch it. Other research talking about their great researches and and learning many things. So, uh, enjoy this. Is uh, is the best way, I guess. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Bianca. Um, and if anyone wants to follow Bianca or follow her work or ask her for any questions, her details are just on the screen there. Um, if anyone wants to check out our social media, you can find us at Sharks for Kids or Shark Education. And you can also visit our website, sharksforkids.com. Um, if there are any teachers out there, we also offer virtual lessons so you can make a re request on our website. Um, this presentation will be put up on our YouTube channel. Uh, and once again, Bianca, thank you so much. Um, if anything, I found it absolutely fascinating. Um, and I'm super excited to see where you go next and what comes out next from your work. So thank you so much. Thank you, Jenny. Thanks for Shark for Kids. It was awesome to be here today. <laughs> I'm going to stop recording.